For the moment, we head to Sri Lanka. What started as an economic crisis has now become a full-blown political crisis too. The government of the day has no majority, no cabinet and no public support. The Rajapaksas may still be the leaders of Sri Lanka, but they have lost the authority to govern. Let me show you something first. <laughs> Those pictures are from last night. These protesters were outside temple trees, the official residence of Sri Lanka's Prime Minister. It is currently occupied by Mahinda Rajapaksa, who's still the Prime Minister. And for days, these protesters have been knocking on his door. They want him to step down. Also, his bre brother, the President, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, they want both of them to step down. But the Rajapaksas have refused to give up power. The opposition has threatened to move a no-confidence motion. Sajid Premadasa is the leader of opposition in Sri Lanka and he has made a demand from the Rajapaksas. Fix the economy or leave office. That's what he said. And I have his statement with me. Let me quote from what he's said. The government needs to address the financial crisis and work to improve governance or we will move a no-confidence motion. It is imperative that Sri Lanka must avoid a disorderly debt default. The government must work to suspend debt and appoint financial advisors to start off the process of restructuring debt. So there is, there is advice here plus a clear warning. What was the trigger? A new report. It said that Sri Lanka could run out of diesel this month. Fuel pumps could go dry by the end of April. Colombo is getting some supplies from India. New Delhi, in fact, has extended a $500 million line of credit for this. India has also given another $1 billion credit line. This is for food supplies and medicines. Under this, New Delhi is sending around 40,000 tons of rice to Colombo. But Sri Lanka is exhausting its credit lines fast. Diesel shipments began on the 1st of April. With the money that's left, Colombo can get just three more shipments this month. The credit line will be fully exhausted by then. What happens next? What are Sri Lanka's options? Reach out to India again, seek a further extension of the credit line. Is India going to oblige this time? Looks like it is. New Delhi is willing to help for more reasons than one. The economic crisis in Sri Lanka has a direct impact on India. More Sri Lankans are fleeing the country. This week, a family of four reached Rameshwaram in South India. So far, 16 Sri Lankan refugees have arrived in India. 15 more tried to, to cross the border, to flee the country, in fact. But... They were caught by the Sri Lankan Navy. And these are the official figures. Reports say there could be more trying to escape. Will this lead to a refugee crisis? The Indian High Commission, Commissioner to Sri Lanka has rejected the possibility of a refugee crisis. He's also dismissed claims that India is deploying troops to Sri Lanka. These rumours have been doing the rounds for a while now, especially on social media. There were reports that said that Indian troops had arrived in Sri Lanka to help maintain law and order. Now, India has categorically dismissed all of these claims and reports saying that there are no Indian troops in Sri Lanka. At the same time, India continues to extend help. But remember, credit lines are not a permanent solution. What Sri Lanka needs at the moment is a bailout. And I've said this before, as a financial experts, Sri Lanka must get a bailout. It needs to restructure its debt apart from getting monetary relief. So they've set up an expert panel. It will advise the government on the bailout talks. They've also got a new governor for the central bank and he has raised interest rates by 700 basis points today to arrest the fall in the value of the Sri Lankan rupee. It's been in free fall. What about the finance minister? Ali Sabri was sworn in earlier this week. We told you about it. Within a day, he resigned. The president has not accepted his resignation. So technically, Sabri is still the finance minister of Sri Lanka, even though he has rejected the job at hand. Who then will lead the bailout talks? Vian spoke to Arjuna Ranatunga earlier today, the former cricketer and lawmaker, and he has accused the Rajapaksa government of gross mismanagement and corruption. Listen in. They should have gone to the IMF and discuss with IMF. The problem with IMF, they don't allow you to uh, use the money you want. It is all about if they are going to do it for development, there should be transparency, which these people doesn't like. I will compare the government with the Sri Lankan cricket board. So if the government is failing and, and the minister doesn't have the backbone to put a stop to it, because ultimately the problem we have here 
every time a government comes a minister comes in the cricket board corrupt people know how to tap the tap the minister it has happened for so many years and it is happening now those are serious charges but they're no secret either. Ranatunga could be referring to the Chinese projects. Many of them were cleared by Mahinda Rajapaksa. They're now mired in corruption. And we've already told you about the many policy decisions that have backfired. All those chickens are now coming home to roost. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.